luck and good health. So um, <clears throat> sometimes in Goshen, like, well, probably most of the time, the idea is that people want to extract or take as much milk as possible, but one needs to know how to do that or when to do that. And, and, and uh, for example, it was mentioned, we might have passed it already, that uh, when, when a cow gives birth, then at least minimum, <laughs> minimum two weeks, all of that milk should go to the, to the calf and, and uh, possibly even up to one month. And it is scientifically uh, known and understood that uh, in this way, <clears throat> especially that first milk that comes from the mother, uh, the, that first milk has very um, uh, <clears throat> uh, special qualities which uh, can give good health uh, for, for the calf for, the, for her whole life. And if that milk is not uh, provided, then the calf will not grow properly. So many <laughs> details of that nature. And the same applies in terms of agriculture, which we've not even touched upon. So again, I, uh, <clears throat> some of these PowerPoints we'll, we'll try to make available. Uh, and uh, then it's a question of, you know, it's like Prabhupada's books are there, right? But how many of us are <laughs> taking the time to open them, to study, to, to read them? We, we, we need, that's why one who is more brahminically inclined will be able to systematically, isn't it? That's one of the um, <coughs> words that Prabhupada uses in the, you know, the seven uh, points of, uh, for establishing, uh, to systematically propagate um, the uh, science uh, of Krishna consciousness, uh, something very important. Uh, how to systematically uh, study uh, this knowledge and how to systematically introduce it you know, within society through uh, established and traditional educational uh, institutions. So um, we don't need to go into this much more right now. Um, so you can go back to, yeah. Uh, so. I mentioned the other two things that I wanted to do, uh, and uh, <clears throat> one has to do with this, um, yeah, now you, you can go to, what is it, videos. This is that TED, uh, TED talk I was mentioning. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, videos. Okay. Uh, let's see. TED talk. Yeah, that one. The sound, maybe you have to put up the sound a little bit. And, oh, well, what to do? <laughs> uh, anyway, I think it's dark enough, and hopefully that will. <clears throat> so just keep in mind this is, um, this person is not a devotee, but, but so many of the realizations that he has um, are very much connected with. <laughs> a lot of what we're talking about. And uh, it means that if an ordinary person can understand that, then surely the devotees also <laughs> uh, can understand it. Sound is up. I mean, on, on, my machine, on the computer. <laughs> That's one word that I always want to say to everybody in my life now. That word is, life is easy. It's so easy and fun. That life is good. Before that, I, I never think like that. When I was in Bangkok, I feel like a, life is very hard, very complicated. I was born in a poor village from the northeastern of Thailand. And when I was a kid, everything is fun and easy. But when the TV came, many people came to the village and said, you are poor, you need to follow succeed for your life. You need to go to Bangkok to pursue succeed, success in your life. So I feel bad, I feel poor. So I need to go to Bangkok. When I went to Bangkok, it's not very fun. I said, you need to learn, study a lot, and work very hard, and then you will get success. That's it. 
I work very hard eight hours per day at least. But what I can eat is just a bowl of noodle per meal. Or sometimes a dish of fried rice or something like that. And where I stay is very bad. A small room with a lot of people sleep. It's very hot. I start to question a lot. When I work hard, why my life so hard? It must be something wrong because I produce a lot of things, but I cannot get enough. And I, I try to learn, I try to study, I try to study in university. <coughs> it's very hard to learn in university because it's very boring. And I start to look at the subject in university. Every faculty, most of them is destructive knowledge. It's no productive knowledge in university for me. When I look at something like a, if you learn to be architect or engineer, that means you ruin more. You, the more these people work, the mountain will be destroyed more. And the good land in Chopaya Basin will be covered with concrete more and more. We destroy more. If you learn agricultural faculty or something like that, that means you learn how to poison, to toxicate the land, the water, and learn to destroy everything. I feel like everything we do is so complicated, so hard, and everything, we just make it hard. Life is so hard. I feel disappointed. I start to think about why I have to be here in Bangkok. I think, I thought about when I was a kid. Nobody worked eight hours per day. Everybody worked two hours, two months a year. Planting rice one month and harvest the rice another month. The rest is free time. Ten months of free time. That's why people have so many festivals in Thailand. Every month they have festival. <laughs> because they have so much free time. Uh, and then in the daytime, everybody will take a nap. Even now in Laos, if anybody, could, anybody go to Laos, you can people take a nap after lunch. And after they wake up, they just gossiping, how's your son-in-law, how's your wife, uh, daughter-in-law? Uh, that's, people have a lot of time. But at that time, because of they have a lot of time, they have time to be with themselves. And when they have time to be with themselves, they have time to understand themselves. When they understand themselves, they can see what they want in their life. So pe many people see that they want happiness. They want love. They want to enjoy their life. So people see a lot of beauty in their life. So they express their beauty in many ways. Some people just carving the handle of the knife, very beautiful. The basket, they're weaving very nice. But now nobody uses that one. Nobody can do something like that. People use plastic everywhere. So, I feel like it's something wrong in there. I cannot live in this way of living. So I decided to quit university and went back home. When I went back home, I started to live like when I remember when I was a kid. I started to work two months a year. I got four tons of rice. And then the whole family, six people, we eat less than half a ton per year. So we can sell some rice. And then I dig, I dug a two pond, two fish pond. We have fish to eat all year round. And we, I start a small garden, less, less than uh, half an acre. And I spent 15 minutes per day to take care of the garden. I have more than 30 variety of vegetables in the garden. So six people cannot eat all of it. We have surplus to sell in the market. We, we can make some income in there too. So I feel like it's easy. Why well, I have to be in Bangkok for seven years, working hard and then don't have enough to eat. But here, only two months a year and 15 minutes per day, I can feed six people. That's easy. And after that, I, before that, I think that stupid people like me, who never get a good grade in the school, cannot have a house. Because people who 
clever than me who get number one in the class every year. They spend, even they get a good job, but they need to work more than 30, 30 years to have a house. But for me, who cannot finish university, how can I have a house? Hopeless for people who have low education like me. But when I start to do urgent building, it's so easy. I spend two hours per day, five o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock in the morning. Two days per, two hours per day. And three months, I got a house. And another friend who was, who was the most clever in the class, he spent three months to build his house too. But he had to be in debt. He had to pay his debt 30 years. So compared to him, I have 29 years and 10 months of free time. <laughs> so I feel that life is so easy. Yeah. I never think I can build a house easy like that. And after that, I keep building house every year, at least one house a year. Now I have no money, but I have many houses. Yeah. My problem is tonight, which house I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So house is not a problem. Anybody can build a house. The kids 13 years old, after school, they make bricks together, make a house. After one month, they have a library. The kids can make a house. Very old nun can build a hut for herself. Many people can build a house. So it's easy. If you don't believe me, try it. If somebody wants to have a house. And then the next thing is clothing. I feel like I'm poor. I feel like I'm not handsome. I try to dress like somebody else, like a movie star, to make myself look good, look better. I spend one month to save money to buy a pair of jeans. When I wear it, I turn left and turn right, look at the mirror. Every time I look, I'm the same person. The most expensive pen cannot change my life. I feel like I'm so crazy, why I have to buy it? Spend one month to have a pair of pants. It doesn't change me. I start to think more about that. Why we need to follow fashion? Because when we follow fashion, we never catch up with it because we follow it. So don't follow it, just stay here. Do what we use what we have. So after that, until now, 20 years, I never buy any clothes. All the clothes I have is left over from people. When people come to visit me, when they leave, they left, they left a lot of clothes there. So I have tons of clothes now. Mm. And then when people see me wear very old clothes, they will give me more clothes. <laughs> so my problem is, I need to give clothes to people very often. No. Uh. So it's so easy. And when I stop buying clothes, I feel like a, it's not only clothes. It's about something else in my life. I need to, I le what I learn is, when I buy something, everything about, I buy it because I, I like it, or I buy it because I, I need it. So if I buy it because I, I like it, that means I'm wrong. So I feel more free when I think like it. And the last thing is, when I get sick, what will I do? I really worry in the beginning because when I have no money, what I will do? But I start to contemplate more. Normally, sickness is a normal thing. It's not a bad thing. Sickness is something to remind us that we did something wrong in my life, that's why we get sick. So when we get sick, I need to stop and come back to myself and think about it, what I did was wrong. So I learned how to use water to heal myself, how to use earth to heal myself, I learned how to use basic knowledge to heal myself. So after I rely on myself, this whole thing, I feel like life is very easy. I feel something like a freedom or something that I feel free. I feel like I don't worry about anything much. I have less fear. I can do whatever I want in my life. Before that, I have a lot of fear. I cannot do anything. But now I feel very fear. I feel like I'm a unique person on this earth. Nobody like me. I don't need to make myself like anybody else. I'm the one, number one. So things like this make it easy, very really light. And, and after that, I start to uh, and to think about when I was in Bangkok, I feel very dark in my life. I started to think many people, many things like me at that time. So I, we start a place called Pan Pan in Chiang Mai. 
this place, the main aim is just to saving seed, to collect seed, because seed is food, food is life. If there's no seed, no life, no seed, no freedom, no seed, no happiness, because your life will depend on somebody else, because you have no food. So it's very important to save seed. That's why we focus on saving seed. That's the main thing to be in Pan Pan. And the second thing is, is the learning center. We want to have a center for ourselves to learn. Learn how to make life easy. Because we were taught to make life complicated and hard all the time. How can we make it easy? It's easy. But we don't know how to make it easy anymore. Because, because we always make it complicated. And now we start to learn and learn to be together. Because every, we were taught to disconnect ourselves from everything else to be independent, so we can rely on the money only. We don't need to rely on each other. But now, to be happy, we need to come back, to connect to ourselves again, to connect to other people, to connect our mind and body together again. So we can be happy. Life is easy. And from beginning until now, what I learned is the four basic needs, food, house, clothes, and medicine, must be cheap and easy for everybody. That's the civilization. But if you make this whole thing hard and very hard for many people to get it, that's uncivilized. So now when we look at everywhere around us, everything is so hard to get. So I feel like now is the most uncivilized era of human on this earth. We have so many people who finished from university, have so many universities on the earth have so many clever people on this earth. But our life is harder and harder. We make it hard for who? We work hard for who right now? I feel like uh, it's wrong. It's not normal. So I just want to come back to normal, to be a normal person, to be equal to animal. The bird make a nest in one or two days. The rat dig a hole in one night. But the clever human like us spend 30 years to have a house and many people can't believe that I cannot have a house. They can't believe that they can have a house in this life. So that's wrong. Why we destroy our spirit? Why we destroy our ability that much? So I feel like that. it's enough for me to live in the normal way in an unnormal way. So now I become, I try to be normal. But people look at me as abnormal people, <laughs> crazy people. But I don't care because it's not my fault. It's their fault because they think like that. So my life is easy and light now. That's enough for me. People can think whatever they want. I cannot manage anything outside myself. What I can do is change my mind, manage my mind. Now, my mind is light and easy. That's enough. If anybody wants to have a choice, you can have a choice. Choice to be easy or choice to be hard. It's different on you. Thank you. interesting points. Uh, we can just spend a couple of seconds on this before we go to our, uh, before we travel from Thailand to Indonesia in our PowerPoint. Would anyone like to um, uh, maybe point out some <clears throat> important uh, aspects that can be connected with some of the things we've been discussing? Could anyone get something out of this? <laughs> what are some important points that he was making that, that we can relate to as devotees? I mean, somebody should, uh, I don't know, I don't go to Thailand very often, but uh, he's like, <clears throat> ultimately everyone's a candidate to become a devotee, but he, he's, pretty <laughs> he's pretty close, yeah. He would really have time to chant his rounds. 
He would definitely have time to chant his rounds, yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, these skills that uh, he had learned himself to grow food and uh, how uh, profitable it is and uh, how simple it is, and these skills, he had taught himself to build a house and, yeah, these things, uh, we also talked about how we can uh, yeah. get these skills and teach others. He has not only taught himself how to build a house, he has built many houses. <laughs> like he says, you know, my, my problem is that which house will I sleep in tonight? <laughs> um, yes. <clears throat> so here's someone who's not having the knowledge, you know, all the knowledge that we have as devotees, uh, but who is, you know, by, <clears throat> I guess, super soul has led him to have some very nice realizations, which are very fundamental uh, <clears throat> to, again, the theme of simplicity, isn't it? Which is a recurring theme, especially in the seventh canto, these five chapters, where now the Muni speaks about, you know, the whole Purnashama, way of life, and many purports, Srila Prabhupada emphasizes simplicity. Yeah, simple living, high thinking, correct, yeah. So we have the opposite nowadays, isn't it? A complicated life is so complicated, huh? <clears throat> so this should be, I, I wanted to share this because when I saw it, I thought, wow, you know, I mean, if a non-devotee can come to this, huh, then with all the knowledge and instructions given to us by uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, if he can do it, uh, and there are many others as well. <clears throat> Any other comment on this? Yes. Just one comment that he was actually born like that. So he also had, ah. he already had a taste for it before. Good point, he yes. So that's sometimes a challenge because most of us, we are like... Um, yeah, it's a much bigger challenge when we are born in the city and uh, have not had that exposure to, to uh, simple, ordinary uh, village life, which he had, so then... Then he had the bad experience of Bangkok and you know, he came back. Uh, yes? It's also just like nowadays there are so many uh, legal complications. Like there are many countries like in Denmark, uh, you cannot just have a cow. You know, like you yes. basically have to have an education for many years. Yes, unless one has a bachelor's degree or university uh, degree, you cannot uh, do agriculture in some countries, maybe here also. Isn't it? Because a lot of what is being done in terms of agriculture uh, <clears throat> is computerized, for example, you know, milking cows in, in most places. Yeah, when you do it commercially, you, you do it with uh, machines and uh, it's all computerized, so one has to learn how to. And so that requires <clears throat> um, more education and uh, things are just more, more complicated. And of course, as we know, and this is one point that Prabhupada mentions, the more we introduce mechanization, then we create unemployment, isn't it? That's the wonderful thing about Vedic culture is that we minimize, we minimize machines. We use technology, as we discussed, but you know the basic um, <coughs> essential technology, and the vast majority of people actually probably makes that point, right? In Vedic culture, really, there's no one unemployed, huh? Because there are so many things that need to be done manually. Whereas in modern society, just like, uh, who is it? Uh, just uh, two months ago, one devotee who works for a big uh, IT company in India <clears throat> uh, sent me an article of the vice chairman of one of the largest companies. Some of you may have read it, I think. Yeah, it appeared in the uh, Times of India. The IT party in India is over. IT party in India means that uh, for the last uh, maybe, I don't know, three decades or more, so many young people, uh, because of uh, technology and um, <coughs> computer software technology, especially in cities like Bangalore and Hyderabad, that, uh, that actually helped uh, <coughs> so many companies all over the world, especially in America. And because that's developed at such a, a, a fast and 
uh, high rate uh, where young people earn practically the same salary as people in America. You know, people in India, uh, when I first went to India some 30 uh, plus years back, if somebody was earning, you know, 500, 500 or 1,000 rupees now, now people earn like uh, 2 lakhs a month, you know, which uh, is, is getting close to uh, some of the salaries. So this person, who is vice chairman, was telling that now, <clears throat> um, and that's understandable, uh, companies will be hiring less and less people. <laughs> as computerization, as mechanization increases, then that's the same point, we need less, less people. Uh, <clears throat> and that's a big uh, disadvantage in so many ways because uh, it means that people have to relearn some new uh, skill, etc., like that, and it puts a lot of people uh, unemployed. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other? Yes. It's just kind of a practical point, because mm -hmm. he's in Thailand, and it's more of a, a tropical climate. Yeah, yeah. In Scandinavia, housing has to be much better, growing season is shorter. Yes. It makes it much more complicated. Yes, definitely. Uh, so we cannot just imitate, yeah. uh, <clears throat> but we can draw some of the basic uh, uh, principles that are there, but that's an important point, of course, that was touched on uh, the other day as well. Uh, <clears throat> we have to take uh, cultures and find it especially nice. It's just interesting because when I have asked people um, which country do you prefer in the world, uh -huh. that there quite a few people have said Thailand. Okay. And uh, so they said people are extremely friendly, and uh, I don't know, but it, it's as if... Uh, if more people live, uh, like he said, even after lunch, they take, take a nap. nap and... Yes, yes, yeah. Well, uh, all these countries, what we call the Far East, I, I've been spending quite a bit of time in the Far East, Indonesia, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, Malaysia. <clears throat> it's like, you know, you try and go to some office between uh, 12 and 2 o'clock. I mean, there's nobody, everyone is off for lunch and, and it's nap time. <laughs> that's part of life <laughs> and uh, the pace is you know there was slower pace the whole culture <clears throat> because all of the, the Far East uh, countries what we call um, uh, Greater India actually Mahara, uh, Bharat, Barsha, Bharat Barsha they're all part of, of, of India somehow uh, with the advent of Kali Yuga became, became uh, separated but um, the, the, the culture, the culture is, is very, still very strong in terms of Vedic culture. Although um, in Thailand it's like uh, Buddhist, right? Buddhism, um, not, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Thailand, um, Malaysia is of course Islam, Indonesia is Islam, Cambodia is Buddhist. Although they have different religion, the culture is Indian culture. Indian culture means Vedic culture to a large extent, yes. One thing that struck me about this presentation was about all the knowledge things. I mean, he, his person, he said that, that actually for being happy, he did not lean, need to learn so much. Like yes. these countries, like Scandinavia, we use approximately maybe 10, 15, some 20 years to get some education. Yes. You know? So he could, whatever he needed to learn to be happy, he could learn that maybe in a couple of months. Correct. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> well, the more complicated uh, we have set up as, as, as it is today uh, around the world, it requires more years of study. But yeah, the more we simplify our lives, then it it's, it's, um, <clears throat> uh, takes less time to... to, to, to <clears throat> Well, he was, he was not a Brahmin, but I mean, for a, what can we call him, Vaisha? He was he's a Vaisha, no? I mean, for him, it, it doesn't require so much. Maybe for a Brahmin, it takes a little bit more, because he has to teach. Right. But like, in general, I mean, and he also said that most of the knowledge...